Goodbye, lazy days. I am very happy uh, to be done with you, to, uh, to not be moving sites. You were less than accommodating, but you were accommodating enough. Next year we'll come with a, with a plan, a reservation, so that we don't have to depend on, on you helping us. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was so negative. Honestly, like, we're really thankful that we got to stay at Lazy Days. We're just uh, happy to be moving on. Five moves. Five moves. That's on us. That's not Lazy that is, Days' it's fault. It's totally on us. <laughs> it is. So next year we'll, we'll come with a reservation. Do the people who work at campgrounds love people like us who come in with no plans, begging for one night at a time? Of course not. That's annoying and stressful for them. And it was a huge event, multiple events going on this week. So that is totally on us. Completely on us. <laughs> We're, we're going down the road. We actually decided to extend our trip and we're actually gonna go meet up with Phil the door guy. So many Airstreamers I'm sure know about him. Uh, if you don't, you're gonna know a little bit more about him soon because we have an issue with our deadbolt and uh, we connected with him and he offered help. So we're gonna meet up with him and get our door fixed. When we came to the Tampa RV show, we intended to just come for a couple days and then headed home, but we ended up running into Phil, the door guy, which I think a lot of you know, and he, I expressed to him, one, we had an issue with our deadbolt that was an issue from the moment we picked it up from the dealership, and it was still not fixed, and that's obviously a concern for us, and so Phil mentioned that he obviously had the expertise to fix it, so we ended up because we were in the same area, able to meet up, and he's actually going to fix it right now. And I thought, what better time to show any other Airstreamers that might have this same issue how he's going to fix it. So Phil, you want to introduce yourself and, and just kind of give everyone uh, a quick spiel of who you are and what you do? Sure. Well, I'm Phil. My last name's Enoch. Uh, I go by the door guy, okay? So a lot of you have seen me on different videos, uh, a good friend of ours. Uh, Wonder Local, been on there a couple times, but more importantly, I traveled a lot of the rallies and things. And the door is kind of my specialty. I mean, you know, we do have a lot of Airstream doors that have problems, small issues, and things, and we've been able to resolve most of those. Um, I mean, obviously, you have a deadbolt uh, issue. We know exactly what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to fix it, but we're just going to kind of do a small tutorial as we go through as to what it takes to fix it and it maybe help some of the airstream owners out there if they don't understand the process um, you can buy a new one and put in there but once we finish with yours it will be just as good as a new one uh, there's really no need to spend the money if you're a little bit handy so we'll get started on it here in a few minutes and we'll have your deadbolt working like me the issue with this deadbolt is it's when it's fully extended is this amount of play right here this should not have this much play in it. And typically what's causing this is this deadbolt gets extended and the door gets accidentally closed on it. So when the door closes on the deadbolt, there's a guide plate in here that gets bent out. And once that guide plate is bent out, you can no longer, um, you can no longer, well, first you can't access the guide plate. Okay. So you have to remove this assembly to get this play out of it. So to remove the assembly, you take these two screws right here out, you pull the, the lock set apart, then we're gonna drill these two rivets out, but then there is a process that you gotta go through to get this part that's bent out from behind the door frame. Sometimes it's relatively easy, sometimes it can be a little more difficult. But we're gonna show you how to do that, then I'll show you the damage once we get the, get the deadbolt out. You know, it almost looks like they put a stainless steel rivet in there. Mm. So let's see if it's going to drill. They did. They put a stainless steel oh, rivet man. in there. There, we broke that one, so that's okay. good. There it goes. There we go. Now we're just going to loosen these screws over here, take them out. So then this half comes off. And if you notice, 
it's got a flat on the bottom of it and the flat is down so when we reassemble it that's how we want it to go back so this is the part where the the plate is bent back behind the door frame and I can I can see it in there let me get a, a different tool here there we go There we go. So to further show what the dilemma is there, so these two little arms right here, as you can see, are no longer in place here. This is the guide pin that I was talking about, or the guide plate. You can see how it's opened up and separated from the deadbolt. So what that does, that gives all this amount of play in here. Mm. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this in a vise, close this back down nice and flush here, tighten it all back up, bend these back into place, make them nice and tight again. Then the deadbolt will only have like this much play in it, which is normal, okay? That's actually a little bit excessive. And then what we're going to do is run a stainless steel zip tie around this, and all that is is just a small amount of reinforcement. It's not necessarily a... Uh, end fix or anything like that. It's just it's again. It's just a small amount of reinforcement it's just something I do We've got it out. So why not make it the best we can make it like I was saying earlier um, You can see the gap here how this is opened up. So what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take and close this gap back up um, Just a couple little taps with the hammer And then bend these retaining arms back over Now, if you notice, there's no gap any longer and all the play is gone out of the deadbolt. So that is, that is the actual cure for the problem. And then what we're gonna do now is just take a stainless steel zip tie and we're gonna put the zip tie around the deadbolt just for a little bit of added security. We just pull this guy nice and tight and then we'll trim off the excess. And that's the repair. And we'll reinstall it and it'll be good as new. That's easy. So it is, <laughs> yeah. So there, there's the finished product. Um, now it's got a nice stainless steel zip tie around it to help these uh, little retaining arms stay more intact should this get extended and the door get closed on it once again. However, if it gets closed on it hard enough, same thing's going to happen. It's going to bend this guide plate out and we get to do it all over again. So no big deal, but there's yeah. no reason to buy a new deadbolt if that's all that's wrong with wow. your deadbolt. So what you want to do, um, obviously the deadbolt can, cannot fit like that. You want to make sure the bolt is extended and just easily work the deadbolt back into the door. It gets a little bit tight at the door frame. Make sure it is behind your decorative piece here. So now the deadbolt is installed. Then we're gonna put on the exterior lock set. It goes through and lines up with these two holes right here. It takes a minute sometimes to get it to, to match up. Right there, okay. Now, as I referred to the flat area on the bottom of the lock, as you can see, it's down. So, this goes back on. And these just need to be snug down good. I mean, they are a cast piece. You don't wanna over tighten them. Um, so, as you can see, the door the lock sets back nice and flush against the door. This, when it's extended now, it has no play in it, hardly at all. Obviously, we got to put the two rivets back in to finish the job, and then we'll check it and see how it works. But you can already tell just the way that it sounds, that click. I mean, I hadn't heard that click since yeah, since the yeah. globe trotter. Yeah, it's nice. So. It's nice and smooth, and that's the way that's the way it should be right here. So yeah, that's nice. We'll shoot the rivets in, and we'll we'll give it a test. Okay. So. Again, the deadbolt is held in with uh, 
with the rivet. You can see how hard it pulled in on that lock set when the when the rivet took up the slack. And make sure that you're out behind this door flange. See how close that is right there? Okay, see now we're out behind it. Nice and tight. Now when the deadbolt comes out, that's all the play that's in it. So it should close properly. Wow. Should we test it? Absolutely, let's test it. So here's the test. Woo! Fully engaged. So smooth. Very nice. Unlock. When the okay. key goes 90 degrees from where it starts, that's a good sign you're getting full engagement. So here's a little thing to be careful with on your doors is you can close your door, but it is only caught on the first latch. When you turn this, it appears that the deadbolt is locked. You can actually turn it back up and remove the key and you think you've locked your deadbolt. But notice the position of the key. It does not go 90 degrees, okay? Hmm. That is a sure telltale sign that your deadbolt did not engage. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is bring it fully back, straight up, and we're gonna get the second lock now the door is fully engaged, fully closed, and now look at the position of your key is versus the original position of the key. So that is a telltale sign that your door is not fully closed, even though it appears to be. So but now it's now it's fully closed and it's unlocked. Is that right? Right, right now, right now it is locked. Okay, the, the, so it's locked. It, so yeah. let's. Oh, yeah. So then you. You re-latch re it, unlock it, and the door's open. And it should function the same for you from the inside. You shouldn't have to put your shoulder against the door, or your knee against the door. It should take no pressure. If your door's working properly like this one, you should close it, lock it, and be done. It is literally that simple when wow. everything's working like it should. You know, if you, but if you're having to shoulder your door or put some additional pressure against it or whatever, that's not what you want, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but again, pay attention to your key, 90 degrees on the unlock, 90 degrees on the lock. Well, I'll tell you what, that feels really good to finally have our deadbolt. Uh, we were just having a conversation the other day about how um, they drove past someone um, whose door had flown wide open going down the highway. So without that deadbolt, that was certainly an option for us too. So, you know, on top of that, just general safety as a whole. Absolutely. It feels really good to, to finally have that fixed. So thank you a lot. My so, pleasure, my pleasure, thank you. Yep.